Hi, I'm Christy Sturdivant, and I am here on this channel to talk to you all about energy and how it works with the universal laws and with human design through our bodies. And today I am going to give you my five favorite tips on uh, parenting kids who are projectors in human design. So if you are unfamiliar with human design, let me talk a little bit about that first. So in human design, there are five different profiles that define, in a way, all of us. So we have manifestors. Those are the ones who go out and initiate new things in the collective. You have generators. Those are your powerhouse energizer bunny types who can do all the work to get the job done. You have a combination of the two, manifesting generators, who have the power to get things done, but can also initiate and move things along. You have projectors who are your specialists of the world, and they take the energy that's around them and amplify it to move everyone forward. And then you have reflectors who are basically like the mirrors of the collective and keep us on point and let us know what's going on. So I myself am a 6'2 generator. I'll go into that more later. My husband is a manifesting generator, but both of my boys are projectors. And as I have been learning about how energy works with the universal laws and with human design, I have noticed several trends with my boys that I thought might be helpful for other parents out there who are projector parents. Um, I want to start this off by saying that I am not a parenting expert by any means and you can take these tips with a grain of salt, but I do know how energy works in, in relation to the overall laws. And I do very much understand how energy flows through individual bodies. So these are just my observations and tricks that I have used to kind of help me work with my kids better so that their energy is a little bit more in tune with mine and so that they can move forward without too much conditioning in them. One, my boys who are projectors will amplify all the energy around them all the time. So if I am happy, they are going to reflect that back to me and then take it up like another level. If I'm angry, oh boy, you know they're gonna take that up another like four or five levels. So as projectors, it's really helpful for me to be aware of how I'm feeling and how I'm interacting with them and responding to situations so that it doesn't hype them up even more so than usual, okay? So tip number two. When I have noticed with both of my boys, and I'm sure this is like common with kids in general, but when my kids are in the middle of an activity, whether it be reading a book or playing Legos or, um, you know, maybe playing a game on their iPad or whatever, I have noticed that if I abruptly call them away for any given situation, they are going to be very, very upset, more upset than I usually think they should be. And this was a big issue with us for a while, but um, I have noticed that if I give them about 10 to 15 minute warning time, it's gonna be a lot easier for me. And that's because projectors, like I said, they are taking the energy and they're using all of their energy in their body and they're focusing on one specific thing and trying to work that out and learn. Projectors are the specialists of the world. They are here to find this niche that they are going to just be really great at and they are gonna go full force driven into that. And so that's what my children are doing. They're finding something that they're putting all of their energy towards and they are they're going for it. 
difficult as a parent because, you know, people have to go and do things, but uh, this is something that, you know, 10, 15 minute timer time has worked wonders for me. Number three, I have noticed with my boys in particular that when I ask them questions and give them an opportunity to take the lead, they really flourish. And that is a very projector-like trait. Projectors are usually taught to wait for the invitation. So they'll just kind of hang back and see how things go. But if you give them an invitation to, uh, you know, choose an activity or pick what they want to do next or what they want to eat for dinner, they usually do a really good job of taking that and saying, oh, okay, my opinion matters. Let's do that. Tip number four that I have for my projector kids is welcome the affection. Since my boys are constantly reflecting and amplifying my energy, um, when they are feeling safe and comfortable and relaxed, they tend to be very, very affectionate. And one of them particularly, my youngest, he is a very, very affectionate kid, but my oldest doesn't usually come around and ask for hugs a lot or want to cuddle. But I know that when I am feeling calm and my energy is really good and he feels really comfortable and confident, he comes in for the affection as well. And I think that is a really great thing to remember um, to, uh, you know, really savor those hugs and cuddles when they come. And I feel like for all kids, but especially for projector kids, it, it makes me feel like I'm doing something right too. So that's always nice. Step number five is have a set bedtime. And I know that most parents usually do have a set bedtime that they're working with. Um, but the one thing that I have found raising two projector kids is that the bedtime is crucial. And we have switched it up lately. Um, we have a very strict bedtime at 8.15 at night. We start getting ready for bed at 7.45. We do all of our routine and then read until 8.15. And then that gives my boys some time to kind of wind down. And for projector kids, this is important because projectors absorb all of the energy around them. So they're taking in all the energy from, from school, from being out with their music lessons, for my husband, for myself, for my dog. And they're taking all of that energy in and projecting it out. So having a bedtime that is set and gives them time to wind down before they fall asleep is really important because they need to expel that energy. And I know this is true because I have other projector friends who have told me that they really need to have about an hour before they go to sleep at night, roughly, um, just to just be horizontal and you know, before they can fall asleep because they just have to expel all of that energy. And there's other things with this that I have noticed with my own kids. Um, like my youngest has different um, areas in his chart that are defined as opposed to my younger. So he stays up a little bit later reading and everything, but if my youngest is not in bed by 8.15, he turns into a little a little dragon and he's very cranky because he just needs that wind down time. So those are my five tips for projector children, parenting projector children. Uh, take what you will. These are just my observations. But if you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to drop them below. Maybe consider liking or subscribing to my channel if this interests you, and I will see you next time. Thanks!